Hello, beautiful souls. I am Valeria Maritza at Healing Through You. I am an infinite being of light, and so are you. Today, I have a treat for you because last night I channeled my October newsletter, which if you haven't received it yet or you haven't um, signed up for it, you can do so with the comments below. Um, and I channeled a message and I was called to actually read that message to you here today. So here it goes. This is straight from the Beings of Lights that I um, channeled last night. The first thing it says is your reflection in the mirror is all but your connection to self. Lose yourself in your own eyes and you will see what we see and really over here what they were asking and what i was seeing is you know how you like can stare in the mirror at yourself not many people do this but if you can do this go ahead and stare in the mirror and just look into your eyes and connect with your souls you know they say the eyes are the um the windows of the souls and they really are so if you look into the mirror and just connect with your soul don't get scared a lot of people do get scared by just looking at themselves in the eye and um because it's a little bit um intimidating and it could be and anyway so connect with that right and then you will be able to see what they see in us the humans right the people the souls that decided to incarnate on this world to have the human experiences and to help the planet and consciousness um to rise and so looking at yourself through the mirror and staring into your eyes really creates this connection with your higher self with the divine part of you or with the divine itself and from there you can gather strength and courage and unconditional love that otherwise you may not be able to reach to the capacity that it is available all right, I'm going to continue uh, reading here, but I was just called to explain that part there. Um, October calls you forward to play, be mysterious and explore. Bring yourself back to the times when you had no cares in the world, when you were just you in the moment, immersed in play. Okay, and here again, I'm being called to expand on this. Um, it could be a moment in time when you were a child and you were just lost playing. It could be a, a moment in time more recently when you were just being you and experiencing all that life has to offer to you. It could be anything, right? It doesn't have to be a specific thing. It just has to catch one of those moments when you were just in bliss, pure bliss, whatever it is. It could be you in, um, taking a bath and just feeling and being in the moment without thinking of all the other things that are going around or that you must do or have to do or need to tend to. Just that moment of bliss. It also can happen when you're uh, meditating and you're completely allowing all of those thoughts that continue to come into your mind to just continue floating through so that you can be in the moment. So it could be any of these things, but they're also talking about you playing. And that means having fun so many times when you start your own business or when you're doing a career or you're going towards the goals the goal may be um to attain a certain amount of money and what we tend to do is save it oh i make this much let me put it away let me see how much i can make this grow by bringing more in or whatever it is but you're just saving it and money likes to be moved it likes to be played with it likes to be spent you ever notice someone who like makes lots of money but they're always spending it? my brother actually is like this he will make lots of money this is since he was like a teenager he was working at a pizza place and he would make lots of money and for a teenager and he would spend it all the whole week and the next week he'll have it again and he'll spend it all and he has continued to be this way for the most part and if you gather up all of the money that he has made and i had and, and i can say oh if i had saved that money i would have x amount of money but no he wouldn't have continued to create and bring more in if he saved it somewhere without ever having fun right so he always has had fun with it and mo a lot of people do this right they have a lot of fun with their money and the more that they give the more that they um, help others or share the more that comes in so it's not about gathering it for some 
golden moment in the future where you can do X, Y, Z. It's about living in the moment and using that money and trusting that the universe will always provide for you. So that's key in here. All right, I'm going to continue reading. Bring the curiosity back to fall into what makes your heart sing and receive the answers that you are seeking. It all has to do with being in a state of play. As when you are playing, there are no attachments to outcome. When you are playing, you are also in a state of joy and creation, curiosity and expansion. When you are playing, you allow yourself to see, expand and receive from places you would otherwise stop yourself from receiving. Okay, and this part, think of kids, you as a child playing in a good time um, or children that you may see now, right? When kids are playing and they're allowing their imagination to go through, who here had imaginary friends? I, I, I had lots of imaginary friends when I was a child. My son does too. When you are in the whole moment of creating in your mind and you are seeing and speaking to your imaginary friends or you're making believe that, you know, these two sticks are the door to a home or whatever it is, um, you are creating from your imagination and it's real it's real for you in in the playtime right and when you are doing these things because you are allowing your imagination to fill your space to fill your mind without negating it right without saying no i'm not really talking to this imaginary friend because that's impossible right that would be your ego telling you that can't be you're just doing it because you're just making believe you're playing right um then you open yourself for other ideas, thoughts, and even beings from connecting you, right? So October, the veil is very thin. During October, November, the veil becomes thinner and thinner. And what does this mean? It means that we are able to reach and see and receive information from other realms that are always available to us, but it's easier. It's easier to be there. So like, imagine imagine a home with a very thick door and then that door becomes thinner and it's a wooden door and then it becomes a curtain, that you know, opaque curtain and then it's like a thin curtain and then it's like this little veil that you can pretty much see everything, but there's just like this little netting there, right? So like, imagine like how that difference between the different realms, between different worlds, how that can be. And so during October and November, the veil is really, really thin and you're able to gather more information, connect with other realms. Um, if you want to communicate with your uh, loved, loved ones who have crossed over, this is a really good and easier time to be able to do that because the veil is thinner. And so they're closer to us somehow or, um, that's just a linear way of explaining it to you. It's not that they're closer or further away. It's just everything just is. But like for us, for us as humans, it's easier. It's as if they're closer to us or we're closer to them and we're able to do that. And so when you are playing and you're making believe, you're making believe by talking to different things or people or whatever. And then you allow these other entities and information to also come through. You're not going to attract or communicate with energies that are low frequency or low vibration like a scary thing because i know the first thing that comes up with anyone who has not connected with other realms is oh i don't know if i want to do that what if you know all of these other things come in what if like bad energy is coming what if like stuck energy is coming what if i get scared right this is like one of the major fears that we have as humans when we haven't done this type of work we don't know we don't understand what it is we have this fear of like oh what if that's going to happen that's not going to happen for two reasons well there might be many many other reasons but i'm going to talk about two number one when you are in a state of joy and laughter and love you are vibrating at a very high frequency therefore you can only attract and connect with other high frequency beings. So if you are open to opening that veil, crossing it over, communicating with the other side, you don't have to fear 
connecting with something that's scary for you because you're not vibrating at that at that frequency okay now the second the second reason you're not going to do that is because you can set an intention i only want to i only want to connect with high frequencies with the highest frequencies high frequencies of love things that are good for me and that will help me and humanity or whatever it is that comes up for you you can set that intention right before you start doing your playing and allowing yourself to receive and just by doing that you only attract those energies that are um, aligned with you all right moving right along i have two more paragraphs so here's the next paragraph when you are playing you raise. oh here we go when you're playing you raise your frequency and are better aligned to your higher self more joyful experiences and the frequency of love which is by the way the highest frequency there is when you are playing you allow yourself to see the abundance in gifts that exist everywhere you go there is love everywhere you look there is light everywhere you touch Okay, so this was kind of like tagging along from the last thing that I mentioned, but also they really want you to understand that there's always abundance, beauty, and love everywhere that you are. You might be um, in the middle of chaos and you might see a child smiling at another child or an adult. You might see a person uh, helping an animal who's caught in, in some type of mud or something, right? You might see compassion and love happening and that just melts your heart in the moment and it brings you back to like, oh my gosh, there is good in this world. There is always this type of stuff going on around us. And it's just up to us to be open to look for that. You will always find what you're looking for. So if you're looking for chaos, if you're looking for bad, if you're looking for negative stuff, you will find evidence of that and more. If you're looking for good, if you're looking for joy, if you're looking for love, you will find evidence of that as well. So it is your choice, whichever one you want to set your attention. Do you want to spend your attention looking at the bad and all the terrible things and how, um, all of these disasters and people are losing their lives or homes in sadness and all kinds of that? Or do you want to spend your time giving more fuel to the good things, to the compassion, to the lovely things that are happening, to how people are coming together, to the abundance that we see, how the generous people are actually, you know, giving out their time or their money or their um, resources to help other people. Put your energy in what you want to see. And by putting your energy in what you want to see, the good, you help more people give their energy to that. And then you continue to see that growth. So it's not a way of putting a blind eye to the negative things that are happening in the world. It's a way of helping more goodness to happen. Wherever you give your energy to, you're giving more fuel. If you're giving energy to the good things that are happening, you are awakening, becoming more aware and making those around you more aware consciously uh, on a conscious level um, for what I'm trying to say here. Like I'm trying to say you are, oh, the collective, that's fantastic the word. Uh, you are raising the frequency of the collective. It doesn't matter where on earth they might be. They might be on the other side of the world and you're feeling that energy of love, compassion, helping, joy, and that grows and you see more of that. If you give your attention to the bad things that are happening, then you're fueling that. Therefore, the universe has to produce more things that are low frequency that will make us feel bad, sad, and angry. Okay, so it's not about turning a blind eye to it, it's to seeing it acknowledging it, but then focusing on what good is coming out of this. Where can I see something good that's happening so I can raise my frequency and help more good things happen in the world, okay? Okay, and then um, the sentence that says, there is love everywhere you look, I just mentioned that, and then there is light everywhere you touch. 
as long as you are connected to your inner light, as long as you're turning on that inner light that is within you, and you're shining that outwards, there could be no darkness where you are, right? So you are walking around, you are that light, that candle that's walking around the darkness, and you are lighting up everything around you. So you're carrying that light with you when you are holding this high frequency, when you are in a state of joy, when you are playing, when you are sending love and compassion. Okay, last paragraph. These are the gifts that you, dear soul, bring forward by being you. The road to your happiness is in your heart. We watch you and see all the efforts you are making. We see the leaps you have already reached. We see the grand door of your arrival each day that you don't give up and keep on dreaming. We fully support you and guide you with each dream you keep holding. We are so proud of you, dear one. All right, so that was the end of my newsletter that I just sent um, this morning, actually, or yesterday, actually. Um, so again, my um, newsletter are channel messages, and I do that once a month. So if you would like to receive them and see it in print, um, go ahead and sign up for that. Um, the link is in the comments below. And also, um, if you found this helpful, if you liked it, please uh, like the show, um, share it with people that you think might really benefit from listening to the messages. Um, oh, and also, if you're listening and you're following me in other places, I have a one day masterpiece, masterpiece, yes, masterclass, um, that is happening on Thursday, October 13th at 8.45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you cannot make the time, you can get the recording. It is a wonderful um, masterclass on releasing the fear of allowing money to come in right and you may say what are you talking about I, i'm not i'm not stopping money from coming in um and of course we're all going to say that because we all want to have more money but if your money is not coming to you with ease and speed if it's not presented to you in a way that you're like oh i have all the money in the world that I can do whatever I want. I can help this person. I can help that person. I can give this. I can go shopping. I can buy whatever I want. If you're not in that state, if you're counting your money and you're feeling like I need to save to pay the rent, the car, whatever it is, or you don't have enough to buy a car or a house or whatever it is that you might be wanting or dreaming to have, then that means that you have some type of belief about money that you're actually subconsciously keeping it away from you so if this is you um sign up for this one day masterclass. It's going to be amazing it is pay what you want there are three different prices there and you can just choose which one feels best for you and you're not going to regret it it's going to be amazing all right on that note i love you so much and i will talk to you soon bye bye